and Nacho Libre. <laughs> Praise God. I want you to open up your Bible with me to uh, John, please. I'm going to read you something I, I wrote today before I get into the message. You know that uh, what you're going to hear biblically when you, when you come here is you're going to hear Pauline Revelation, the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is New Testament theology. It's what our faith is based upon. We're not Old Testament people anymore. We have a better covenant based upon better promises and what a radically wonderful covenant it is. And so this, uh, what we call in him teaching, um, really declares and describes who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, and what we can do through our divine union with Christ. And here's some of the benefits. It will keep us out of religious bondage. In him, revelation, in Christ's revelation, will keep us out of religious, bond, religious bondage. How many of you want to go back into religious bondage? No. It keeps our theology straight. You won't get mixed up in bad theology if you find out who you are in Christ. It will keep you in right relationship with God if you know who you are in Christ. It will remove condemnation from your life once you find out who you are in Christ. It positions you to experience all of the promises that God has for you once you understand who you are in Christ. It affirms your authority over the devil and demonic forces once you know who you are in Christ. It builds true faith, the Jesus kind of faith, once you know who you are in Christ. It protects you from end time hysteria. And <laughs> let me tell you something, the further we go in history, the more end time hysteria there will be. You don't have to worry about the end times. You have not been appointed unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's an in him scripture, by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So as long as you're in Jesus, nothing to worry about. When Jesus gets worried, you can get worried. But he ain't worried, amen? <laughs> Uh, it, uh, I can't read my own writing here. It makes your walk in the Spirit sweat-proof. I like that. A lot of people think that walking in the Spirit is pretty spooky and difficult. It's really not. And the more you discover who you are in Christ, the easier the walk in the Spirit becomes and the less goofy it becomes. Anybody ever been exposed to some goofy Holy Ghost people? I am a Holy Ghost people, but I don't go for goofy. I go for the real deal. Praise the Lord. So do you. Praise the Lord. It equips you to operate in the Spirit. It helps you find your place in the body of Christ. It helps you discover your true identity in Jesus. It removes the burdens of, of all the religious systems. It changes the way we pray. You will pray differently as you discover who you are in Christ. I'll say this about that. So much of the time we're praying for things that we've already got. Praise the Lord. So we'll pray with more authority, right? Um, it'll help you reorganize your social connections. I'll talk about that one day. <laughs> it will eliminate confusion. It'll help you make decisions. It'll help you focus on what's important. It'll help you become a true worshiper. And I'll add to that, it will kind of cause you to edit your song list. Once you discover who you are in Christ, there are some songs you just can't sing anymore. You know, like this one. Tempted and tried, we're off made to wonder while others prosper, though in the wrong. Get that one out of your song list. Praise God. <laughs> you say, oh, thanks. No, it's stuck there. Thank you very much. Uh, praise God. It'll cause your prayer life to become more effectual. It'll restore joy and peace to your life. It will eliminate worry, doubt, and fear. It will remove envy and jealousy and competition. Once you know who you are in Christ, you don't have to compete with anybody anymore. Praise God. And it gets you off of the self-help, new age, motivational merry-go-round. I'm just sick and tired of seven steps to lift myself up by my own bootstraps and all that stuff. I'm complete in Christ. I come behind in no good thing. I'm thoroughly furnished in every good work. Instead of us trying to fix ourselves, let's acknowledge that he fixed us in the new birth and let's become what he has destined us to be. Yippee-yi-yo, praise God. 
And uh, that's it. That's 25 reasons of probably a few thousand reasons why studying who you are in Christ is very, very important. And so tonight we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about judgment and condemnation. And let's start with this one, John 5, 22. If this, doesn't, if this doesn't set your wood on fire, then you have wet wood. For the Father judges no man. I want you to stop right there. 99% of the Christian world is not looking forward to judgment. Maybe you're not looking forward to judgment. But after you hear what the Bible has to say about that, all of that fear is going to leave you. For the Father judges no man, but he has committed all judgment unto the Son. The Amplified Bible says, placing judgment entirely in the hands of his Son. So your friends aren't going to judge you. And the religious Sanhedrin is not going to judge you. And society is not going to judge you. The Lord Jesus Christ has been given all judgment. And let me tell you about Jesus. He is a loving Jesus, a giving Jesus, a merciful Jesus, a kind Jesus, a long-suffering Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Good Shepherd. He is tender and full of tender mercies, and His mercy endures forever. He did not come to condemn, but to seek and save the lost. He's on your side. He's not mad at you. He's for you. Praise God. I'm telling you what, if God had committed judgment to some mean person, we would be in trouble, but he has committed all judgment unto the sweetest individual who ever lived, and his name is Jesus. Praise God for his tender mercies. Praise God. Hallelujah. He is he's interceding for you and me right now. He's not trying to find fault. He's looking at what he's put inside of you and celebrating what you've become through the new birth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't have to fear judgment, and I'll show you why. Let's look at Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And I know a lot of people think walking according to the flesh, you know, um, drinking and dancing and smoking and chewing and spitting tobacco on people and all that stuff. No, what Paul was referencing was living under the law, regulating our lives by what we do in the flesh. Taste not, touch not, handle not, Will worship, doing something within our own will and ability to make ourselves holy, to make ourselves righteous, to make ourselves acceptable. And if that's the way we choose to live our lives under the Old Testament, there is plenty of condemnation, lots of condemnation. But to those who walk in the Spirit, there is no condemnation. No means no. So here's the question. You want to go back into the old law and system where everyone failed and everyone was found short and everyone had condemnation? Or do you walk, want to walk in the new covenant where there is therefore none, now no condemnation? Praise the Lord. I want to live squarely and 100% in the New Testament. I don't want to go back to the Old Testament. It was declared redundant. It was fulfilled. It came to an end, and it's over with. We have a better covenant based upon better promises. Somebody say amen for that. I don't know why in the world people want to go back into those sabbatical laws and all those feast days and fast days and holidays and holy days. And You say, well, but for the symbology of it. Let me talk to the men here for a second. Do you ever go online and look at a car? Do you ever go to the dealership and pick up a brochure? These dealerships, car dealerships, have wonderful brochures. And you can read those brochures and just salivate. You know, the interior and the power plant and the drivetrain and all the electronics and navigational age. And there's just a whole list of what you're going to get when you get this car. And you start dreaming about this car. And thank God for that little brochure because that has helped you decide what kind of car you want. And somebody comes up to you and offers you that very car, that very model for free. And you say, no thanks, I've got a brochure. 
The Old Testament was your brochure. <laughs> but the New Testament is the real deal. That's what you've been hoping for and believing for. And I'm not going to trade the reality of Christ back to the signposts that pointed to Christ. Did that make sense to you? I'm not going to exchange my personal experience that I'm having right now and forever with Jesus to that Old Testament, with that Old Testament experience of hoping and praying and looking forward to some future experience in God. Praise the Lord. I am a New Testament, born again, tongue talking, spirit filled, devil chasing, scripture quoting, in him preacher. Hallelujah. Listen to this, Romans 3.20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. Does that mean anything to you? No deeds of the law will justify us. None whatsoever. Let me put it to you where you can understand it. You'll never be good enough. You'll never be holy enough. You can never do anything to qualify for heaven or fellowship with God. The only way you and I can come into fellowship with God and enter into the presence of God without any fear of inferiority is by being in Christ. And when Christ walks into the throne room, we walk into the throne room too. And when Jesus sits down at the right hand of the Father, we sit down at the right hand of the Father too because our lives are hid with God in Christ. And that's the way I want to keep it. And as long as you're in Christ, there is therefore now no condemn nation. We need to learn how to have our lives hid in Christ. We need to hide from some of our relatives. We need to hide from some of our friends because they're not celebrating all of our blessings. You got any fault finders in your family? You have any fault finders or critics in your circle of friends? Have anybody in your life that's quick to tell you what you're doing wrong and where you're missing it and how you could improve? I think that may fall into the category of the blind leading the blind. Let me ask you a question. Did those critics die for you? Did those critics go to the cross for you? Were those critics chastised and tormented for you? Did those critics get cut off from heaven for you? Did those critics go into the dark domain for you and fight hell for you? Did those critics bear your sins and suffer in your place? Did those critics rise from the dead by the glory of God? Did those critics ascend into heaven? Did they put their blood on the holy of holies that cries mercy, mercy, mercy? Did they do that for you? Are they gonna be there on the great white judgment, white throne judgment judging you? No. They're there's only one judge and his name is Jesus Christ and he's already judged you worthy. He's made you acceptable in the beloved. He has judged you honorable and he has judged you righteous, not by what you did, but by your faith in his substitutionary sacrifice. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and your righteousness and my righteousness is based upon faith in the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ. You know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to do what the preacher said this morning and maybe separate ourselves from some people, at least not pay heed to what they say and not let it get into our craw, not let it affect us. Because people can say things to you that you dwell on them after a while and they rob you of your faith and they rob you of your confidence. I don't know what's wrong with people, but you'd think in a family we would celebrate one another's successes. One old Cajun boy said it's like a bunch of crawdads in a bucket. They're all fighting to get out of the bucket, but as soon as one gets to the lid, lid of the bucket and he's about to get out, the others will grab him and pull him back down. Bunch of crawdad friends as far as I'm concerned. I don't know about you, but I'm out of the bucket and I'm staying out of the bucket and I'm not going to let anybody pull me back in the bucket. Whom the sun is set free is free indeed. And I'm not going to be entangled with that kind of bondage again. If my, let me tell you something. If your friends are fault finders, you need to find some new friends. May I say that again? If your friends are fault finders, you need to find some new friends. Why are you holding on to people who are dragging you down? 
you will never achieve your dreams. You'll never go to the top if you keep holding on to the opinion of others. Are you a man pleaser? Are you a God pleaser? Praise God. When a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies have to be at peace with him. I, I love people, but I don't have to listen to them. I love them, but I don't have to buddy buddy up to them. I'm going to help you with some theology right now. You say, well, they're all brothers and sisters in Christ. I know that. We're all members of the body of Christ. But not all of our members in our natural body fellowship closely with every other member. I want you to notice how far your nose is from your rear end, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> you get my theology there? You know, thank God for my rear end, but my nose is happy being on this end and not on that end down there. And I acknowledge the importance of every member in the body of Christ, but that doesn't mean they have to stick their nose in my business and I don't have to stick my nose in their business. Thank God that there's a little bit of distance between some of us because some people are not profitable. Some people are not encouraging us. Some people are sitting around nitpicking and telling us what to do and they don't even know how to do it themselves. I think they ought to check up on themselves and check up on their own lives and when they become perfect, maybe they can give some advice, but I've looked around and I haven't found a perfect person yet. Yeah, come on, I'm trying to help you here today. There is therefore now no condemnation, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And let me tell you something, you are in Christ Jesus. Lift your hands up and thank God that you are in Christ Jesus. The Chinese have a proverb, the dogs bark, but the caravan keeps moving. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just, they can nip at me and they can bark at me, but I'm just going to keep on moving. Praise God. I don't have time to sit around and listen to these naysayers and doomsdayers. I'm on my way somewhere. I've got a goal out in front of me at a mission, and I'm not going to hold on to people that hold me back. Best thing we can do with those people is let them go and let God deal with them. Praise God, because you and I ain't going to fix them. May I say that again? <laughs> We're not going to fix them, especially if they don't want to be fixed. Some people, that's just the way they are. They just like criticizing. Praise God. Hey. All right. Listen to this. Words of Jesus, John 5, 24, let's put it up. And I want you to listen to every word and every syllable. I solemnly assure you that the man who hears what I have to say and believes in the one who has sent me has eternal life and he does not have to face judgment. He has passed from death to life. Did you hear that? The one who believes in me and believes in the one who sent me will not see judgment. He has passed from death to life. Praise the Lord. You see, here's the revelation that you have to get. You have to so closely identify with Christ. You have to be so intimate with Christ and develop a relationship where it's hard to tell where you stop and he begins where you're tied up and tangled up with Jesus so that you do not see any discernible separation between you and Jesus. Now look at it. He's in you, right? You're in him, right? You're complete in him. Your life is hid in God with him. And so the only way you could be judged it's for you to step out of Christ. You want to do that? You want to step out of Christ and be judged with the sinners? You want to step out of Christ and be judged with the religious crowd who are trying to do it on their own? You want to step out of Christ and step out of his mercy and step out of his grace and take it? 
or do you want to be like me and have no, I, no desire whatsoever to take it? I'm a big scaredy cat. I want to stay inside of Christ. I want to miss the judgment. I want it to pass over me. Jesus is my Passover lamb. His blood is over the doorpost of my temple. The enemy's got to pass over. I'm not going to step out of Jesus. And as long as you're in Jesus, you don't have anything to worry about because he's already been declared righteous and he's already been given all power in heaven and earth and God has given all judgment to Jesus and here's his judgment he declares you worthy he declares you holy he declares you righteous he declares you redeemed he declares you a child of God he declares you his brother he declares you an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ hallelujah he declares you free hallelujah That's what we have to get to. We have to get to the point where we're so confident of our relationship with Jesus that it would be impossible for us to think of Jesus being tortured again, being beaten again, being cast out of the presence of God again. Remember, he was cut off. My God, why have you forsaken me? I can't imagine that. I can't imagine that at all. So, he did taste death for, for every man, but he's not gonna do it again. He did bear stripes and wounds in his body, but he's not gonna do it again. He was punished for our sins, but he's not gonna do it again. And I'm not gonna ask him to do it again. I'm going to celebrate everything he did for me and I'm going to enjoy it and I'm going to declare it and I'm going to receive it and I'm going to live it, praise God, and don't try to get me to deny what he did. The only way God can judge you again is by judging Jesus again. And the only way he can find fault with you is by finding fault with Jesus. And the only way he can cast you out is to cast Jesus out. And the only way you can go to hell is for Jesus to go back to hell again. And he ain't going to go back to hell again. He ain't going to go back to that place of darkness again. He ain't going to go to that place anymore. And as long as you're in him, you're going to go where he goes hallelujah and you're not going to go where he doesn't go and he's not going down he went up we're crucified with Christ nevertheless we live yet it's not us but it was Christ who lives in us hallelujah and the life we now live we live by the faith of the son of God get it who loved us and gave himself for us. He's not a mean Jesus. He's a kind Jesus. He's a sweet Jesus. He's a tender Jesus. He's a loving Jesus. He's a giving Jesus. He's a protecting Jesus. Lift your hands and thank God that your life is in Christ. You need to let this revelation hit your soul that you're in Christ. He's not someplace far away. He's closer to you than your breath. Praise God. We sing songs where I'm seeking after Jesus. Well, you don't have to look very far because he's in you. And in him you live and move and have your being. I don't know what people are seeking. I was a seeking once, but now I've found. Hallelujah. I'm running after him. Oh, really? Are you running after him? I'm walking in him and talking in him and moving in him and living in him. I don't have to go chasing him anymore. Praise God, because I've taken up my permanent residence inside of Christ. He said, you will dwell in me and I will dwell in you. And we're not talking about running this way and running that way. We're talking about living in Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it'll change the songs you sing. I can't sing I'm broken. I can sing I'm complete in him, hallelujah. I was broken. And that's a song that maybe sinners could sing. But you and I are complete in Jesus. And I know somebody's going to argue, well, it's such a sweet song, and you have to have a broken and contrite spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're an Old Testament believer, that's right. But if you're a New Testament believer... All of that's changed, hallelujah. If any man is in Christ, didn't say he's a broken vessel. If any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. All things, including the brokenness, has passed away and everything has become new. 
Nobody made me the song Nazi, but if they did, <laughs> I'd have to fix the song list. I don't sing them, I just sing in tongues. If they have those goofy words, I just sing in tongues. Because there's something powerful about singing. How'd you learn the alphabet? <laughs> A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. That's as far as I got. <laughs> that's, how we, that's how we remember things. And, and when we sing them, they get planted down on the inside of us. So when we're singing words, Hitler Youth sing about the Fuhrer. See, the power of a song and the words have to be right, not just the melody, not just the tempo. It doesn't have to just be musical. It's got to be theologically correct. It has to be a New Testament song for New Testament saints celebrating a new way of living and a new life in the kingdom of God right here and now. Praise the Lord. Thy kingdom has come. There was a time when they were praying, thy kingdom please come, but now we're living in the kingdom. Hallelujah. And we don't have to look at it as something that's far off in the next stage. This is the age we're living in. Hallelujah. Thy will be done right here and right now on earth, this earth as it is in heaven. That's what we're talking about, identification with Christ. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Now I'll be honest with you. This type of teaching, every time you hear it, you'll bear witness with it and you'll go, yeah, 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 that's right. Because it is right. But because we have been indoctrinated to so many other lifestyles and philosophies and theologies, it is real easy to slip back into the old way of thinking. And I've found out with these in him truths, you have to hear it and hear it and hear it and memorize it and quote it and sing it and celebrate it. And by degrees, we start to get changed and one day we get this epiphany when it's my God, I am in Christ. I'm looking out through his eyes. I'm listening through his ears. He's inside of me moving my hands and my feet. I am in Christ. And when that revelation hits you, it will transform you by magnitude. And then a day or two later, you'll forget about it. <laughs> and life will happen, and you'll start thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do? And then you'll remind yourself, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. And it'll kick back in. These new creation realities will kick back in. Praise God. That's why I do a lot of repetition. It'd be great if we could just tell people one time and they got it. That's not how I learn. How'd you learn your multiplication tables? over and over and over by rote, by rote. And you know, what's wrong with us is, if we're not careful, we're gonna become agnostic in our faith. Uh, I beg your pardon, Gnosticism. Is that right, Gnosticism? What's Gnosticism? Worship knowledge, new ideas, concepts seven steps to this and 10 steps to that and, and you know, this formula and that formula. We hear that stuff and exciting and mentally it makes sense and intellectually it's, it makes sense when we can put all the little dots together and all the little formulas together and after a while, we're just caught up in the formulas. We're not caught up in the person of Jesus anymore. We're just caught up in doing it and going through the, the rituals and the motions instead of a living fellowship with a living, loving God. I am so glad that God put Put judgment into the hands of Jesus and not into religious people. Religious people are unhappy people. Religious people are the most happy when they're making other people miserable. Jesus said, woe unto you, you, you lawyers, you experts in the law of Moses. You put burdens on people that are impossible for them to bear and you don't even lift a finger to take those burdens off of them. I'm telling you what my job description is. I'm here to remove the burden off of you. I'm here to do my best to remove the bondage off of you and help release you into the freedom that Jesus wants you to have. 
Just jump to your feet right now. Just cast off anything that might be weighting you down. You're, you, God's not mad at you. God's not disappointed in you. God's not through with you. God sent Jesus to save you. God loves you. God wants you. God has a place for you. It's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He will not withhold any good thing from them who walk uprightly. He is showering you with his blessings right now. Well, I might not be perfect, but Jesus is. And I live in him. And my life is hid. Oh, I love Jesus. He loves me. Thank God he set me free. Hey. <laughs> Isn't it good to be free? Religion, religion gets you all bound up. You can't even spit. Religious people can't have any fun whatsoever. You laugh too much, they'll say, that's foolishness. You get happy in church, oh, you don't need to act like that. I'm gonna act any way I wanna act, hallelujah, praise God. I'm gonna raise my hands, I'm gonna lift my voice, I'm gonna clap, I'm gonna shout, I'm gonna dance about, because there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ. I live in Him. He paid the price, oh, you ain't my judge. I don't live for you. I live for Jesus and you do too, hey. See, if, if you don't have songs like this, you gotta make them up, hallelujah. You can't find a song like this in the songbook, just make it up. Let's do some happy clapping. Lord is shout. Whom the Son is set free is free indeed. I have found my Savior's love complete. He supplies my every need. And I've got joy unspeakable and it's full of glory. Full of glory. Full of glory. I've got joy unspeakable and is full of glory and the half ain't yet, never yet been told. Lift your hands and worship him. The one who gave his life for you. The one who lives to bring you through. The one who sits at the right hand interceding for you. The one who's coming back for you. Does that sound like a judge? Let me tell you what these religious people are. They're modern day inquisitors. If they dressed in character, they'd wear black robes with pointy hoods and put you to the rack and pull your toenails out because they enjoy the religious power that they have over people. And if you don't draw the line and say what they expect you to say and dress the way they want you to say and live the way they want you to say, they'll find a way to point their gnarly finger at you and accuse you of things. But let me tell you something, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. They're doing the devil's work and they don't know it. I'm not here to accuse you. I am here to approve of you. Hallelujah. I'm not here to find something wrong with you. I'm here to see something good inside of you. I only have one fault to point out about you. I'm sorry, I'm going down there. I only have one fault about you is the fact that you don't realize how marvelous you are. Hallelujah. 
Yeah, you don't know how marvelous you are. Yeah, you don't know how wonderful you are. You don't realize what God has done. You don't realize all the wonderful things he's put inside of you. You're the crown of his creation. He gave you his very name and he identifies with you in everything that you've done and everything you ever will do. Yeah, you just don't realize how wonderful you are. You've been listening to the naysayers. You've been listening to the people that beat you down and knock you down. Listen to me, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. You're all together beautiful. You are fearfully and wondrously made. You are the crown of his creation. Lift your hands. And he made you that way. There's therefore now no condemnation to you because you're in Christ Jesus. And unless you have plans on stepping out of Christ, you don't have to fear punishment. You pass from death to life. Praise God. You've already been judged, accepted. You've already been judged, righteous. You've already been judged, complete. You want to listen to Jesus? You want to listen to some idiot? <laughs> you want to listen to the highest authority or you want to listen to your kinfolk? <laughs> your inbred, brow-beaten, backstabbing kinfolk. Jesus said, a man's enemies will be those of his own household. But I got good news for you. If God be for us, who can be against us? <laughs> Lift your hands. If God be for us, no one can be against us. Because God is for us, no one can be against us. If God is for us, it don't make any difference what they say. God loves you anyway. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. You, you hear it enough, you'll start to believe it. If God be for us, nobody can be against us. Your family can't be against you. Your co-workers can't be against you. Those old mean-spirited religious folks can't be against you. Those naysayers and accusers can't be against you. Those fault finders can't be against you because your life is hid with God in Christ. Just pull in a little deeper. Go a little deeper into Jesus. Get down there so deep that they can't reach you anymore. They can't go to your heart of hearts. They can't go to your secret place. That can't go to that place of special union that you have with Jesus. You got a bond with him, you ain't got with anyone. And just wrap yourself up in Jesus, tie yourself up in Jesus, get all tangled up in Jesus, where there's no discernible difference, where he ends and you begin, you're one in him. Let me help you for the rest of your life. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. You know, with the same measure we meet, it's meted back. If you are a critical person, I'm going to beg you to get on your knees and ask God to deliver you from that fault finding critical spirit. There are some people that they don't notice any of the good you do, any of the well-meaning things you do, any of the hard work you do, but as soon as you make a mistake, they'll focus on that and concentrate on that. And I tell you what, that's all right, but don't you be that person. Find something good to say about somebody. Find something to celebrate about somebody. Don't be sitting in the seat of the scornful. Don't look down your nose at others. Don't get that haughty attitude, well, I'm better than you because I fast and I pray and I give more and I'm more holy and I pray this and I do that. Oh, listen, you have no right to judge another man's servant. 
You have no right to judge anyone for whom Jesus died. Get your hands off of God's servant. Leave God's servant alone. Let him deal with them. They've got a judge. They're walking out their own salvation. They're walking out their own faith walk. We need to get ourselves fixed. And I, I don't even think we'll ever, ever, ever be qualified to sit in the seat of the judge because God has given all judgment to the sweetest one in the universe, to the wisest one, to the kindest one, to the most giving, loving one. Praise the Lord. Isn't it sweet in here? Isn't it sweet? Let's pray this prayer. Say, Father, Father. forgive me for being critical of others. Right now, wash me in the blood, your liquid love, and let me be more like Jesus. Loving, kind, giving, in Jesus' name. You may be seated. The religious crowd dragged a poor little trembling shamed woman to Jesus. And he said, we caught this woman in the very act of adultery. And the law says she should be stoned. What do you think? Now this is Jesus looking at an adulteress. And under the law, she should be stoned. Are you sure you want to live under the law? And Jesus said, here's what I have to say. The one among you who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. And Jesus stooped down and began to write in the dust. And one by one, these self-righteous men's hearts convicted them and they left ashamed. I wonder what Jesus was writing. Maybe he wrote somebody's name, Josiah Pride, Levi Envy. I wonder if he was maybe writing some names. <laughs> I wonder, I, I'm curious about that. Was, what was he writing? Because he sees everything and he knows everything. But they all left. And here's Jesus with this little gal. He said, woman, where are your accusers? She said, no man accuses me, Lord. He said, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that the Jesus you love? He didn't upbraid her. He didn't give her a lecture. He shouldn't have told her what she should have done and what she didn't do. He just said, well, you've admitted it, so quit it. Isn't it easy? If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's faithful to forgive us. My wife and I were organizing a crusade in Mexico, and we had a helper in Mexico organizing, renting the, the facility and the chairs. We had to rent everything, the sound, the lights, advertising. It cost thousands of dollars to hold a crusade. And this young man was handling it all for us. And my wife asked Victor for an accounting, said, uh, we need receipts to go with these disbursements, Victor. Okay, okay, I'll get them to you, I'll get them to you. And uh, days went by, no receipts. So again, Victor, we have to have receipts. We have to account for this money. We have to have a bill for every receipt, for every check we've written. That we, money that we spent. Okay, okay, I'll get it to you. We kept getting excuses. And my wife said, you've got to do something about it. So we actually went to Mexico and, and had a come to Jesus meeting with Victor. I said, Victor, we got to have receipts, brother. Uh, we have thousands of dollars unaccounted for. Where's the money? And he said, I stole it. I said, you stole it? He said, yeah, I was sick and I went to the hospital and in Mexico, they won't let you out. It's not like America unless you pay the bill. And he said, then they, they'll put you in jail. 
And, and he said, if you have anything, they'll come and attach your stuff. And, and he said, I got weak and I had the money and I didn't want to go to jail. And, and so I, I stole the money. I said, you didn't steal it. He said, I did, I did, I, I stole your money. I said, Victor, how can you steal a gift? I gave that money to you. He said, what? I said, it was a gift. He fell down on his knees and grabbed me around my legs and cried. He brought his whole family to me and Loretta and the husband and the wife and the two kids got on their knees and pledged their love to us and said, we will serve you for the rest of our lives. To this day, I think Victor would take a bullet from me if I asked him to. You know, he who forgiveth much loveth much. We need to learn how to show mercy. We need to learn how to be more like Jesus and be more merciful. People get weak. People have problems. People have issues. That's why Jesus came, because we couldn't help ourselves. And the best thing you can do for anyone is to show some mercy. Amen. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall see God. If you want to see God move in your life, start being merciful. If you want to see more miracles, start being merciful. If you want to see your prayers get answered, start being merciful. If you want to have the Holy Ghost flowing in your life, be merciful. Praise God. Amen. I'm preaching a lot better than your amen. And... Amen. Praise God. Let me see if I can wrap this up right now. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus was your scapegoat. Our sins were put on him, and he was driven into the wilderness. And when he came back, he didn't come back with our sins. And he ain't going back to the wilderness to find them. So stand up. It's in him teaching. It's in, him, it's in Christ teaching. It's New Testament theology. It's what it is. It's, it's, it's victory teaching. It's good news teaching. It's new birth teaching. It's the teaching of union with Christ and completeness in Christ. This is a salvation you will never be able to earn. This is a salvation you'll never be good enough or smart enough. This is a salvation that only comes one way, by grace through faith. Not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Isn't he a sweet God? Isn't he a kind God? All he has is love for you. Isn't he a good God? Isn't he a kind God? All of his thoughts are good toward you. Isn't he a sweet God? Isn't he a tender God? Isn't he loving and giving and kind? He's not finding fault with us. He's got only love for us. Lift your hands. And let that love wash over you tonight. To be hid in Christ is to be hid in love. To be hid in Christ is to let the billows of life wash over you. To be hid in Christ is to let the living waters just flood over your life hid in Christ is to be like a fish swimming in the sea with the billows of love deep cries unto deep to be hid in Christ is to be submerged <laughs> in his love in his word I'm telling you we're being washed over by the love of Jesus, by the liquid, livid, luminous love of Jesus right now. I walk out to the seashore at Monterey and I can't see the tuna and the cod and all the fish. But they're down there in the deep. And that's where you and I need to remain is 
in the deep. Deep in the love of Jesus. Deep in his heart. That's where I want to live forever. Never to depart. When I was lost and undone, God gave his only son. And he said, whoever, whosoever will, let him come. <laughs> I was a sinner, I was ashamed, but he did not reject me, he let me in. He's the sinner's best friend. You know, that's one of the accusers that the Sanhedrin, the, the the Pharisees had. He's a, he's a friend of publicans and sinners. He was a friend to this sinner. Lift your hands. He was a friend to this sinner. I tell you, a sinner needs a friend. A sinner needs someone who knows him and loves him anyway. <laughs> yeah, he was my friend. He's a friend who sticks closer than a brother closer than your father, sister, mother. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll never reject anyone who comes to him. He's already paid the price and broken the power of sin and nothing can keep you out. You're welcome to come right in. <laughs> Look up here at me. I think people are mixed up about the sin thing. Since Calvary, since the crucif crucifixion of Jesus, there's as much sin on the earth as there ever was. More, there's more people. And we've learned different ways to sin. We got ways to sin our parents didn't have. We got ways to sin our grandparents didn't have. Tomorrow there'll be a whole new way to sin. Jesus didn't destroy sin. He destroyed the power of sin to keep you out of his presence. Sin can no longer keep you out of the presence of God. By the blood of Jesus, you and I can walk boldly into the Holy of Holies, and we're not claiming our own righteousness. We're claiming the tender mercies of Jesus. We're entering in by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you try to work your way in, you're going to be on the outside. But if you'll humble yourself and plead the blood of Jesus, you can go into the very throne room of God, and the devil's out there saying, but they did this, and they said that, and they acted this way and God is saying I see your mouth moving but I can't hear a word you're saying hallelujah all I hear is Father have mercy on these I'm going to keep them that you've given to me and where I am is where they're going to be lift your hands again wow our lives are hid with Christ in God <laughs> And that's where I'm going to live, and I'm not coming out. And I'm not going to be a fault finder. God, help me to get delivered from the very temptation of finding faults with others. I'm going to ask you to take your seat one more time. I know you've been up and down. And I'm just going to leave you with this thought. Here's my wife over here, Ms. Loretta, one of the greatest preachers I've ever met, right here. Really. You'll find out one of these days, she just, man, I don't even like to follow her. It's just like, and sweet, kind and giving. You wouldn't find fault with my wife, would you? Who'd want to find fault with my wife? It's not your wife, that's my wife. Now, take me, for example. Oh, enough about me, let's talk about me. I've been in the ministry for 44 years. 
full-time ministry. I've been, I've been preaching for 47 years. I've been to 70 nations preaching the gospel. I took your pastor to India, got him exposed to missions, uh, written books, had communion on every state capital in America, started churches, Bible schools. I've been around. What keeps me going? The work in the ministry. Now then, who do I work for? Well, I work for God. Who am I living to please? I'm living to please God. Who do I serve? I serve God. I'm God's servant. I'm God's servant. And the Bible says, don't judge another man's servant. Are you following with me? So Sister Loretta's a servant of God. Don't judge Sister Loretta. Not just because she's my wife, but because she's a child of God and a servant of God. And don't judge me. I'm telling you what, if you judge me, you would be so convicted and so... <laughs> be like kicking a puppy dog. You know, why would you do that? <laughs> My name is Huggy. <laughs> Hug me, Huggins. I'm a teddy bear. How could anybody get any pleasure out of picking on me? I don't, I don't recommend it because I'm God's servant. And he said in his word, do not judge another man's servant. Je Jesus died for me. He died for her. I can't judge you. Jesus died for you. You're God's servant. Now I'm going to get down where you live. Whose servant are you? Then why do you keep cutting yourself down and putting yourself down and finding fault with yourself? Why do you keep condemning yourself and beating yourself up? Why do you keep doing that to yourself? Wake up. You're God's servant and the Bible says don't judge another man's servant. Paul said it's a very little thing if I'm judged of you or of any man's judgment. He said as far as that goes, I don't even judge myself. I don't have time to sit around judging myself. I don't have time to sit around finding fault with myself and pointing a finger at myself and kicking myself and pushing myself down. I mean, it's bad enough when you got friends and foes and family that are holding you down and pushing you down, but it could be that you're doing more to hold yourself down than anybody else is. I'm going to ask you to lighten up on my brother and lighten up on my sister and lighten up on my friends and lighten up on the family of God and stop picking on yourself and stop finding fault with with yourself and stop beating yourself up. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap and let's start celebrating who we are in Jesus. Yeah! You'd be surprised how happy you get when you get set free. That's what I'm talking about right there. Move something. Move something. Oh, yeah. Give the Lord another hand clap and a shout. Woo-woo. Yeah, yeah. Everybody say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I feel better now than when I came. Amen. Every time I come, I preach a few minutes longer. <laughs> went, to, went nine minutes over. But Sister Loretta took three of those minutes. And you not listening to me took another three minutes, <laughs> making me repeat myself. So according to me, I'm right on time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I want you to say something. I got to explain it before you say it. <laughs> Jesus said, love your brother as you love yourself. I'll tell you what's wrong with the fault finders. Their fight is not with you. They're fighting with themselves. It's not you that they hate. They loathe themselves. 
And they think if they can push someone lower, then that'll make them a little higher because they have such a poor self-image. But here's what Jesus said. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if you don't love yourself, you can't love your neighbor. And if you don't love yourself, you can't love me. And if you don't love yourself, you're not going to be able to love other people. So you got to learn how to love yourself. You say, love myself? Yeah. Love the new creation. Love the new you. Love the child of God. Love what God has done in your life and who he has made you to be. Praise God. So I want you to say it. Say, I love myself. I'm not mad at myself. Jesus chose me. That's his business. He knows what he's doing. I agree with him. He loves me. I love me. He loves me. I love me. I love me. He loves me because I love me because he loves me. I'm free. That's when you give the Lord a shout right there. Some of us grew up in a family where we couldn't do anything wrong. You know, couldn't do anything right, I mean. Couldn't do anything right. I'm glad my family was a little more easygoing. I acted like the devil. They loved me anyway. But some of you didn't have that kind of love. Love was withdrawn. If you didn't do right, withdraw their love. Shun you. Your own family. Cold shoulder won't talk. We've got to get that fixed, folks. I want to minister to you. Some of you are standing, some of you are sitting, so why don't you all sit? Give, how many of you give me two more minutes? Do you enjoy it? No condemnation? No condemnation. What does no mean? None. Wow. Wow. I get these words of knowledge, and uh, I got one today, and uh, it is a lost marriage certificate. Lost marriage certificate. Praise God. I don't know if you lost it on purpose or accidentally. <laughs> I don't know when you lost it. I don't know where you lost it, but you lost it. I don't know if you found it, but you did lose it because you lost it. And these words of knowledge come so that God can identify someone and let that person know that he's talking to them specifically and not just everyone generally. There might be one or might be two or three people who lost their marriage certificates, but it seems un unlikely to me. So I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes and let's see who that may be. And the Lord will have us to further minister to you and bless you. Nobody's looking around but me. Go ahead, TJ, and minister to the Lord. No one's looking around but me. And uh, think about that lost marriage certificate. If you're in this room and that means something to you, or even if you're online, I had a word of knowledge the other day and someone in, in uh, Oregon, Eugene, Oregon, called in, said, that's me. I forget that we're live streaming sometimes. Lost marriage certificate. Nobody's looking at me and you raise your hand up, you say, I think that might be me. Who are you? I want to minister to you. Lost marriage certificate. Is that you? Really? Okay, come on up here. Um, anybody else? Lost marriage certificate, man or woman? Single or Married, lost marriage certificate? You? No, you're just praising God, okay. All right, so tell me about it. Well, I, I got married, yeah. and then I needed my marriage certificate, and uh, I could not find it. I searched and searched and couldn't find it, so I had to go buy another one. Okay, so you're the only person in this room who, who's res Let's step right over here. You're the only person in this room who's responded. Is that you two? Or well, there are two of you. Stay right here for a second. What's the deal? So I went to the courthouse the other day to find out if, if we are married or we're not married because we entered in some papers. But uh, they're there, but we have to finish filling them out or we're kind of married, so it's kind of lost. So I figured I'd get up and 
Sí. <laughs> I'm going to minister to both of you. I'm going to minister to you first. You stay right here. Okay. Do not go anywhere. Yeah. Lift your hands up. I have seen your willingness to serve. I've seen your willingness to give. I've seen your willingness to change. I've seen your willingness to live. I've seen your willingness to pray. I've seen your willingness to serve. And I'm going to reward you, says the Lord. You're like that little woman who lost a coin and searched the house. And what you've been looking for, you will find. Because it's never been hid, it's been right there all the time. And it's gonna change your life and change your circumstances and change your mind. It has this seal of approval that you are mine. Now wait just a second, wait just a second. Spotlight is on you, sister. Just turn right around, see that? Spotlight is on you. Let's pray in the Spirit just for a minute, church. That's a complicated story you just told me. Am I married? Am I not? Am I kind of married? Am I sort of married? What is marriage? Do I want to be married? Am I going to stay married? Maybe I need to run away from this marriage. You can run away from a man, but you can't run away from me. Cause no matter where you go, that's where I'll be. <laughs> you can't run away from the one who loves you so. There's no place out of my presence you can go. Did you ever have God sing to you before? God is serenading you through me. I wish he had a good voice to use, but listen to the words. You can run away from a man, you can run away from home, but you can never go so far that you'll run away from the Lord. You can run away from the pain, you can run away from the shame, but no matter how far you run, I will remain. <laughs> So where are you gonna run? Where are you gonna go? It's me that you're looking for. <laughs> you can't look to a man to fix your circumstance. You're not gonna find it in love, sex, or romance. You'll only find it in me. So the invitation is always open. I stand with open arms. And if you come in, you'll never have any alarm. You'll be safe from harm in my arms. I'm the one you're looking for who loves you evermore, who finds no fault, who wishes you well, who conquered death, sickness, and hell. And I'll never stop loving you, so you might as well give up. I'm gonna be there at every turn of every corner The things you used to like, they won't satisfy ever again. You'll stop finding pleasure in Piccadilly and sin. The only place you'll find any peace is here in me. Come in, daughter. Come in tonight, come in, little one, walk into the light. You don't have to be perfect, you don't have to be right. Just come in to me, step into life. Sister Loretta, would you come up here, please? 
my wife is going to put her arms around you and hug you and pray for you. And she's going to lead you in a simple little prayer. Let's all stand up. I get very moved sometimes by these things. I don't even know if you realize how supernatural that is. The Bible says if we pick at one another, we'll bite one another and devour one another. And sometimes relations are so caustic and so painful that it's damaging almost to the point of no repair. But I have confidence it's never so messed up that God can't fix it back up. Did you know that this couldn't happen in a different atmosphere? These words of knowledge and special moments like these happen because the atmosphere is an atmosphere of faith and love. You had just as much to do with this as me or anyone. Your worship has brought Jesus here. Your yielded spirit has allowed him to flow. I've got a word here for everybody. A wounded spirit who can bear it. You can break your leg and get over it. You can operate on one kidney. But when your heart is broken, only God can fix it. Only God can fix it. A new boyfriend isn't going to fix it. A new girlfriend isn't going to fix it. A bottle of Jack Daniels isn't going to fix it. A, a bottle of pills isn't going to fix it. A trip to Hawaii isn't going to fix it. Changing churches isn't going to fix it. The only person who's going to fix that broken heart is the mender of broken hearts, and his name is Jesus. You can't fix yourself. You can't be your own physician. You can't lift yourself up by the bootstraps. There's not enough self-help to help yourself. You ain't going to get any help unless you come to the Lord because your help is going to be found in Jesus. If you have a broken heart, I want you to run up here as fast as you can and let the great physician pour in the oil and the wine and heal your broken heart tonight. Whatever people said to you, whatever they said about you, those hard words that were spoken over you, I'm telling you that Jesus has his horn of anointing oil and he's pouring it into you from your head to your toe and he's reaching inside of you and touching you where no one but he can go. He's a mender of broken hearts. He's going to cause you to mend. You're going to get your life back. You're going to live again. He is that brother. He is that friend. And he's touching your heart and causing it to mend again. He's pouring in his liquid love. He's pouring in the oil and the wine. He's going to fix your heart. He's going to do it by his spirit divine. All you have to do is say yes. All you have to do is yield, and he will do what he does, and you're going to heal. He's a mender of broken hearts. He gives us a second, a third, and a fourth start, and a hundred starts, and a thousand starts, and his mercies are ever new. Every day is a new day, and he's got new mercies for you. He's a mender of broken hearts. Your heart is going to mend, and you're going to get blowing and going again, my friend. TJ, you're moving into a wonderful time of your life. Wonderful time of your life. The 
Jesus said to Peter, he said, the devil wants to sift you like wheat. And he said, but I prayed for you. And let me tell you what happened to Peter. He became the rock in the church. The enemy wanted to take you out, but he lost. You have been told throughout your life that you're not good enough, you're smart enough, you don't have this kind of ethic, you don't have that kind of ethic. You've been even told you're never gonna make it, you're never gonna fail, but listen to this man of God tonight, I'm telling you on the authority of Jesus Christ that you're gonna make it in grand and glorious style, passing every temptation, winning every trial, and you're gonna do it with a song and a smile because God is for you, and if he's for you, who can be against? you. Hallelujah. TJ, this is the best time of your life. Now here's a, here's a sweet little girl and you look at her, she's just always happy and it looks like she's never had a broken heart and never been disappointed. But let me tell you something, God is reaching down where nobody can touch you but him and he's fixing that little hurt place deep down within. He sees in secret, he rewards openly, and he's ministering to you tenderly. Yeah, see, you can't just pretend it away. <laughs> you can't just ignore it. Do not turn aside that which is lame, but rather come and let it be healed. Well. Who've I missed? Everybody down here? Okay. Go ahead, uh, TJ, if you're able. <laughs> People have said some hurtful things to you. You still think about them. We all do. But I believe if we can have a, enough of the blessing of God working in our lives that we'll, we'll forget about it. The, the good will overpower the bad. The good days will eclipse the bad days. The good memories will push out the bad memories. Our hopes and expectations will overcome our doubts and fears. You're a winner. You're the righteousness of God. You're gonna make it, you're gonna win. It doesn't make any difference what people have said. Jesus loves you. He's on your side. He's never gonna cast you out. In Him you do abide. That's where you want to hide. That's where your critics can't go. That's something they don't know. They can't do for you what Jesus has done. So just let him touch your heart. He's the sweetest one. Yes, he is. Yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is. You are good, you are smart, you are talented. You... Wow, sweet spirit here, huh? Let's give them a few minutes, you may be seated, we'll give them a few minutes. Go ahead and minister to the Lord. Well, they're up. All right, before they sing this song, this will be our dismissal song. Um, just thank God one more time that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Now, tomorrow is when you have to put this to work. You know, as, as soon as you get the word, the enemy is going to come and try to steal it out of your life. And somebody, it's going to happen. I promise you, somebody's going to rain on your parade pop your balloon, do all that stuff, and that's when you have to speak, open up your mouth, and say, I am accepted in the beloved. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am complete in Him. And I wanna put that word into you so that any time that kind of pressure comes, those promises are gonna come out of you. When, when, you're, when you're going through a trial, it's not the time to, to, to go back to the book of Judges. <laughs> It's the time to go to the book of Ephesians or Galatians or Romans, amen? We're more than conquerors through Christ, okay? Uh, be sure and tell people about Summit. Let's get some more people out here. It's okay to Twitter. It's okay to Facebook. It's okay to Periscope, Livestream, word of mouth. 
invite someone next week and let's fill this room up because other people need to, need to discover who they are in Christ. That's the only reason, just they need to hear it. So 